Hey everybody, it is 12.06 on this Thursday, the 13th of January. Welcome to Central Valley Talk Live. This is the noon hour. I'm Austin Reed coming to you from our Tower District Studios inside the Mike Briggs building. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Uh, Man, I cannot believe it's already almost mid-January. How is this happening? Time is just flying by. Hey, we are going to be joined now by our first guest here in the noon hour today. Give it up for... Dr. Alan Hedberg. Welcome back, friend. Thanks for joining us. Good to be back. Happy New Year. And that's true. That's true. And we have a a great topic today of depression. And that's, Mm -hmm. (laughs) unfortunately, what a lot of people experience, even at this time of the year. Right. But because of the COVID, more people are depressed today than would ordinarily be the case. Right. You know, we generally think about 10% of the population, 12% of the population. It's increased now to 13, 14, 16, 18 percent of the population that are experiencing some aspects of depression. It can linger for short periods of time or kind of a long period of time. You know, people are more isolated, people more withdrawn, non-social, uh, don't engage in usual activities, uh, don't see people that they usually see. Uh, Financial in- insecurity, I would imagine. Very much so. Yeah. So there's a lot of anxieties and depression that kind of prevail right at this particular point in time. So I thought we should take a look at that in terms of some of the people that are experiencing depression. You're not alone. That's one thing to know. You're not alone. This is a common, it's been referred to as the common cold mm-hmm. of sure. mental health or the sure. common cold of behavioral health uh, because it's so frequent and it's just part of what life is. You know, some people get depressed maybe once maybe twice you know some people prolonged Mm -hmm. sometimes it's a very short period of time it's it varies but we all know depression when we when we experience it (laughs) yeah when you came in uh just minutes ago i was you were telling me what we are going to be you know focusing on today and and i had told you i said yeah i've I've been facing a lot of depression as of late sure so uh, the question is um yeah what do you do that's a good question, because <laughs> there, there's, there's a lot of things you can do. Uh, yeah, I look at it this way. I'm a therapist. Mm-hmm. So there are things that I do with people that I see in my office who experience depression, whether it's just minimal or quite profound. And so I have a series of activities and series of questions, series of issues, series of exercises that I go through as a therapist. And uh, that requires you to come to therapy. <laughs> yeah. But there are things you can do without going to therapy, or in addition, you know, to going to therapy. I'd like to kind of focus on a couple of those uh, today, because I think everybody can take charge of their life, and that's kind of an idea. You know, you're not alone, but you can take charge of your life. You can take charge of the experiences that you have that are depressing or anxious, or even the experiences that are elation, you know, positive and happy. Uh, you're responsible for those. And so you can do something to change them. You can do something that will moderate, Mm -hmm. you know, the feelings that you have, and particularly depression. You want to moderate that. If you can't eliminate it, you want to make it moderate so you can live with it, so to speak, and get get by. But uh, there are two things that I I would point out in the area of depression that I have in my book. I wrote Mm -hmm. this book, Out of the Darkness of Depression, and it's available on Amazon. It's available on my website. It's available... Uh, Barnes & Noble, you know, various places, but out of the darkness of a depression. And what I did here was to pick up two ideas that you can do on your own. And I took them on a page for the the book, and I'll look at the one in my to-do list. My to-do list, if you kind of look at it that way. There are things you can do. So make a to-do list. So here, there's something you need to do every single day. Make your bed. Do something simple. Do something that you can say, okay, I've achieved, I've done this. You know, go outside and pick up the papers and then rake a leave a little bit. Just, you know, clean up your house a little bit. Do something very, very simple. And then you at least have done something today and you can say, okay, I've accomplished that anyway. Yeah. And then you add to that, you know, another thing and then you add to that another thing. So maybe you just write in a journal. Maybe just take a little notebook and just every day you're just writing on a paragraph. That's something simple that you can do. So these are the things you do every single day of your life to help you kind of move out of that depression where you don't want to do anything. You want to be inactive. So that's an activity you can do. Then there are things you do every week. You know, you might take a walk, you know, every week. And then today you might just kind of go to the end of the block and then 
Next week, you might go a little bit further. Next week, you might go a little bit further. Next week, you might go a little bit further. And then before you know it, you're going twice a week. And then maybe you're going three times a week. So maybe do something once a week. Go to church. You know, go to a club meeting. Call some friend. Write into a journal once a week. You know, do things that are uh, eventful. You know, go to a game. You know, Fresno State. Go to a basketball game. Go to a football game. You know, just do something that you can say a little extra. And then you do something periodically. You know, you don't do these things every day, but you mm -hmm. do them periodically. Write a poem. Ooh. Write a short story. You know, create some kind of a song. You know, play on the piano if you have one, just a little Any bit. Any kind of art. Just, yeah, do something that's creative, if you will, artsy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, you do that periodically. See, bring some flavor into your life. Bring some variety into your life. So, you see, there are things you can do. You're not helpless. You may feel that way, because mm -hmm. that's what depression is. It's a feeling of helplessness. Yeah. But you and your family and people that love you and care for you can do these things with you. And so it becomes a joint activity of you and somebody else doing these kind of things. So make sure every day you do something, once a week you do something, and then periodically you do something. And before you know it, you're doing these things more frequently and more regularly. And before you know it, you're starting to feel, yeah. you know, associated with that, a little bit more positive feelings. Have you noticed um, in your career... You, you've been a therapist how many years well, now? 50 years now. Okay. <laughs> so you've seen a lot of changes. Oh, yes. Um, oh, yes. Today, though, why are we seeing so much mental illness, in your opinion? Well, we have stresses today that we do not have okay. when I was young. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when I was growing up, we didn't have these kind of stresses. So we are living in a much more stressful environment, and even in the last year or two because of the COVID and right other factors going on that even elevated a little bit further but today we have a great deal more stress than usual then we have many more self-destructive behaviors that are available to engage in marijuana is is a self-destructive behavior all the kind of drug use is self-destructive behavior so we have people who engage in those kind of behavior patterns that uh, defeat the very purpose of life, of fulfilling a purpose, fulfilling a, a dream, fulfilling a, a goal, you know, that you have. Uh, so you get sidelined by just some of the stuff that's available today that was not available, you know, in the past. And then, then I think we look upon depression today as maybe uh, more common and maybe people admit to it. Okay. You know, today, then they would admit to it in the, maybe 20 years ago, 30 years ago. The stigma is The changed. stigma factor there is yeah. operating. So it's been there. Right. But we're much more likely just to say, you know, I'm depressed and share that with somebody. And that's a good thing. Yeah. Because then somebody can kind of help you and join in and yeah. get you out of it. Right. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, to my best friends, I always, if, if I'm feeling kind of down, I, I will say, I'll mention, yeah, I'm just not, not doing great. You know, it's okay to admit okay, that. Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay, Because somebody may have it. Yeah, you know, I know it. I've been there too. And here's what I did. I did ABC. You know, right, and right, right. and that kind of helps you move beyond. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So the other thing we're talking about is you're going to be starting a new one year long series. Uh, Wednesdays live at 4 p.m. here at Central Valley Talk. That's right. Um, the show title. Psychology for today. All right. So let's let's dive into that. Yeah, what I'm going to do is take a, a series of topics in psychology. I'm going to start with marriage and family okay. and look at this, the research that has been done in terms of what makes a productive family, a productive marriage, a good, healthy marriage and family. And what do we know as, uh, from people who live positive marital lives and family lives? What do we know? What do they do? How do they live their life differently than those that have struggles and difficulties? Chaos. We're going to start with that. Okay. And then I'm going to take different topics and look at the research in the area like happiness. Mm -hmm. You know, what's the research in the area of happiness? What does it tell us about happiness? How do we create happiness? What is happiness? How can we create it? How can we live a much happier life? We're going to take topics like that and just move them through over the course of the year. Yeah, and you'll be doing it uh, once a month? Once a month, the once first month, uh, yeah. week of the month on the Wednesday at 4 okay. o'clock. Perfect. Very good. Um, people can obviously go to your website um, to learn more. Yes, uh, www.booksbyhedberg.com. And that book is? That book is available there, but it's also available on Amazon yep. and Barnes & Noble. and Many places to find and you. There you can find it there, yeah. You don't need to be depressed. 
Right. You know, you can okay. associate with people who are depressing or you can associate with people who are non-depressing or anti-depressing. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you want to choose music, people, places, things, activities that are anti-depressing. So you can right. take charge of your life. You can do that. But you don't have to live a life of depression, hang around people who are depressed, listen to music that's depressed, mm -hmm. go to places that are depressed, eat food that depresses you, <laughs> you know, and so on. You don't need to do that. Yeah. yeah. Change the way you live and yeah. gear it towards an antidepressing lifestyle, and you'll be much happier because of it. I love it. I love it. Uh, okay, uh, booksbyhedberg.com. We will see you soon. Very good. Thank you. Thank you much. Yeah. Bye for now. I'm Austin Reed. You're watching Central Valley Talk. We'll be back with uh, more guests later today.